Aunt Evelyn Williams, who is also my lawyer, um, finally got a court order to come to see me. And um, since I could not tell her the extent of what was happening, I told her, please do something because uh, I was accused of killing a New Jersey state trooper and New Jersey state troopers were quote unquote guarding me and guarding me consisted at that time of sticking things into my wound, of putting powder in my eyes that blinded me and saying that if I did not tell them what uh, they wanted to know, uh, I would never see again and some other things that I just never talked about. Um, and I don't really want to get into that now because it will make me remember too vividly uh, that period. But anyway, based on demonstrations outside of the hospital, um, I was um, transferred to another hospital and the uh, New Jersey State Trooper were replaced by some other guards. They weren't much better, but at least uh, they did not uh, attack me physically. Um, I uh, altogether uh, spent six and a half years in prison. Uh, I was accused of many things. I was acquitted on all charges except for the New Jersey uh, where I was accused of uh, aiding and abetting uh, in the murder of a New Jersey state trooper. Uh, I was tried by an all-white jury in a county where more than 70% of the people based on a, a jury project study were already prejudiced uh, and thought I was guilty. Um, it was a legal lynching, and I'm actually ashamed of even participating in that. I should have just stayed in the cell and said, y'all do whatever you want, because it wasn't a trial. It was a lynching. Uh, I was sentenced to life plus 30 years, plus 30 days. Um, I um, spent more than two and a half years in solitary confinement in men's prison. Um, and in 1979, with the help of many people, many of my comrades, I was able to escape from prison and there was no other possible alternative. Uh, there was no such thing as an appeal. My aunt was very frustrated. Uh, she was doing the appeal and parts of the transcript disappeared, uh, the evidence disappeared, and so there was no such thing, no such possibility of ever uh, receiving justice in the courts of the United States. I still believe that there is no justice in the United States, and I still believe that more and more uh, the court system and the criminal justice system is a criminal system and will serve as a conveyor for poor people, for African people, for Latino people, for all oppressed people. Um, I don't want this really to be a, a run-on sentence. I would like to have more of a dialogue. If that's cool with everybody, is that cool with everybody? And so um, I said a little bit about myself. I don't want to do a, a speech and tell you what you're already aware of. So I'd rather really address myself to talking about things that you're interested in, whether it has to do with me, whether it has to do with Cuba, whether it has to do with our struggle, or whatever you'd like to ask about. Let's limit the amount of speaking and do more questioning. Are we agree? Okay. Um, what are you what are your feelings on the uh, impact of the audible threat being released from prison after twenty seven years uh you know, incarcerated? What type of impact do you think this is, you know, release will have on the struggle against racism and oppression in the United States? Well, 
I believe that uh, Geronimo is a amazingly strong human being who has suffered, I mean, in an unspeakable way. I mean, nine years in solitary confinement. I mean, Geronimo has withstood things that, you know, I mean, it's amazing that a human being can withstand. And he has left the, that prison after 27 years with his head held high and being committed to the liberation of African people and all oppressed people. And so I think that his uh, presence, his words, uh, his experiences are of infinite value to people who are interested in making, uh, building social justice uh, in the United States. Um, I think that his uh, release is a definite victory for uh, all people. Um, but, I, you know, when I think about it, uh, even though I am clear that uh, his uh, release is a victory, I mean, they knew for, I mean, years and years and years that he was framed. It was obvious everybody from 60 minutes to whoever talked about how he was framed by the FBI. I mean, and they talked about it 10 years ago. So the fact that he remained in prison for 27 years, still, still, he was just absolute rage and, in, you know, indignation. Um, but I think that uh, that is the price that one pays when one becomes an example of resistance. Anybody who becomes an example of resistance to the vicious uh, system that exists in the United States must expect to be uh, targeted. I, um, during slavery, they cut off the heads of slaves and they put them on lap posts. Uh, and today, uh, even though it is totally obvious that um, people are innocent, were victimized by COINTELPRO, even though they talked about the Freedom of Information Act and they said, yeah, we, we did it, you know, we, we, we targeted people, we tried to destroy people, but they have never once admitted to and said, we tried to uh, uh, put Sun Biata in prison for, I mean, every every minute of his political activism. They never said, we, we're trying to kill Mumia. They never, I mean, it has been a, a, a meaningless freedom of information because really what they give you is a million pieces of paper with all the lines blacked out. So what kind of freedom of information is that? You know, I think that it is important, uh, the, the case of Geronimo, because